Hello and happy Labor Day weekend, CSI 135, Section 400 students for the fall 2013 semester. I just wanted to go ahead and do a quick video to cover some of the topics that we had discussed on Wednesday evening. And these are the same video tutorials that will be posted each week to either recap the topics that we've covered or to go over some of the assignments which we've done. Okay, so this is a Windows virtual machine here, right? It's Windows XP. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is how to download PuTTY and how to install PuTTY and then connect to the system Vader from your house. So again, if you remember from Wednesday evening, the first thing you're going to want to do is go look for the PuTTY download and we want to make sure we get it from PuTTY.org. There's a couple other sites, but definitely download it from the source. So as you can see, you've got your PuTTY executable here, and this will actually just give you the binary that you can run. But what we're going to do is we're going to run the installer. And this is actually going to install PuTTY on the system for us. So I'm going to go ahead and click Run. And verify that the publisher is known. OK, so then you get the Welcome to PuTTY Setup Wizard. So I'm going to click Next. I'll go ahead and accept the defaults and it's going to install some files for me Oops, VMware error alright so here's the putty readme gives you some information about putty so we'll close that window down so now when I come to start run you can see I now have a folder which has some different putty programs but the one I'm interested in right here is just plain PuTTY. So I'm going to click on PuTTY, and as you can see, the window that it comes up with is very similar to the window which you saw at the school on Wednesday night. Now, from your home, you'll need to put in the fully qualified domain name, or the FQDN. So that is vader.aacc.edu. And remember, we want to connect with SSH. In fact, let me go ahead and show you what happens when you try to connect with Telnet. So I'll click open, and as you can see, it says network error connection refused. And the reason for that is that Telnet passes your information in an unencrypted format. So let me start PuTTY up again. I'll type in vader.aacc.edu, and we're going to leave it with SSH. And I'll click open. And now Vader is going to connect out. And if you get a message here, a number of you saw this message on Wednesday evening. This just simply means that the secure shell key has not been accepted by this workstation yet. So I'm going to click yes, and you should also click yes as well. And then it's going to ask me log in as. So I'll go in as CSI 135B25. And I'll hit enter, and then I'll enter in the password. And there you go. So now I'm logged in. So if I type who, it will show me who's currently logged into the system. Let me make this window a little bigger here. All right, so if I type in who, you can see it'll show me who's logged into the system. All right, if I type in uptime, it shows me how long the system has been up, 306 days. Probably going to be re rebooted here soon at some point. And if I type in ls, I won't see anything because I don't have any files in here yet, but ls is the command stands for list, right? And it would list out my files if there were any files in here to be seen. Okay, so from your Windows host, this is how you would download PuTTY, install PuTTY, and then run PuTTY to connect to the system. Now, there are definitely other ways to connect if you don't like PuTTY, or different utilities that you can use. You could also go to your start, run, and type in CMD, right? And that's going to start up your DOS window. And from the from the DOS window, you used to be able to Telnet, right? But as you saw, we can no longer Telnet. If you had a program uh, similar to SIGWIN installed, you would be able to connect. But PuTTY is probably your best option. If you don't want to use PuTTY, you can also use what's called Secure CRT. And this is what the Secure CRT looks like and it says it's been at least 30 days since I've checked for an update, but I'm not interested in checking, right? I simply want to go ahead and start it, but first let me show you. It's, you can download it from 
a company called Van Dyke. And let me look for um, Secure CRT down, whoops, download. Now, Secure CRT, and there it is right there from vandyke.com. So, Secure CRT is a paid application, right? So, they'll let you use it for 30 days. And um, as you can see here, it's very nice. It, they've got a, a download for Windows, download for the Mac. And that's actually right here. As you can see, I'm actually I've paid for Secure CRT a while ago, so I can use CRT on my Secure CRT on my Mac. But back to the Windows, um, they also have it for Linux as well. So you've got it for the Mac, for Linux, and for Windows, right? And you get to get a chance to see what that utility looks like on the Mac. And let me go ahead and demo on Windows. So here on the Windows, I would just basically say new session. We're going to use SSH2. Host name is vader.aacc, whoops, .edu. Username CSI 135B25. Click Next. And the session name, you can enter anything you want in here. I'll just leave, leave that the way it is and click Finish. And you can see now I have a new session. I'll double click. And again, you're presented with the window that Secure CRT does not recognize this key. So you can accept it just once but we want to accept and save. So I'll click accept and save. It's going to ask for my password. All right, and there we are. And the thing I like about CRT is if you go to the options and you can take a look at the session options, you can change the way your screen looks, different colors. Um, as you can see here, the background changed a little bit. Let me try for something a little more dramatic. I think there's a black and yeah, yellow and black is one of my favorites. A lot of different font options, very uh, very easy to use. Let's choose Courier New. There we go. Click OK and OK. So as you can see, my font options have changed. My background color has changed. My text color has changed. So Secure CRT, some of these things you can do in PuTTY. It's just so much easier to do them within Secure CRT. So again, I'm logged onto the system. Let's see who's logged in. Right, B25, that's me. Some students from the 235, I believe, is the, either the system administration or the programming course. And you can see that they're logged in, right? Okay, so that is how you would go download Secure CRT, and that's how you run Secure CRT. And let me type exit to terminate my session. Hit the X, okay. So we'll bring back up the putty window. And that is how you would connect from Windows, right? Download PuTTY, or you can get the 30-day trial of Secure CRT. And if you like CRT, you can go ahead and purchase CRT at the end of your trial or prior to the end of your trial. So let me go ahead and iconify this Windows virtual machine. All right. Now, I'm on my Mac now, and this is the terminal program on the Mac, right? So, and this is free. And there's a number of ways to start it. If I go to the Finder, I can go to Applications, and then to Utilities, and this is where Terminal is located. And as you can see, I believe I've already drug it out onto my, there it is, onto my, um, my launch bar. So I have Terminal here in case I need to start it up. You could also double click Terminal, and then it'll fire up a window for you. So that is where Terminal is located. Let me go ahead and close this finder window out. A uh, student also mentioned that you could spotlight it, right? If you wanted to come to the spotlight and type in terminal, and as you can see, it gives you terminal right there. It shows it's under applications, right? And all kinds of things with terminal in the name. Okay. All right, so this is the terminal window, and from here, you can type in ssh space dash minus l and then this is going to be your username, so I'll type in CSI135B25. And then you're also going to type in uh, the name of the system, which is vader.aacc.edu. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, I get prompted for my password, so let's enter that in. And I'm logged in. So again, on the Mac, you can use the terminal program, and this is the command that you would issue. SSH space dash L, which is your username, followed by, you know, the dash L is followed by your username, and then the name of the system to which you want to connect, vader.aacc.edu. Okay, 
So that's using Terminal, which is free. It's included on your Mac. And again, we just saw Secure CRT. If you wanted to use Secure CRT for the Mac, you can also get a 30-day trial. And as you can see here, I'm already logged in, right? Um, I've got the session saved off. So every time I want to connect in, I just simply click Connect, vader.aacc.edu student, double click, and it'll automatically log me in. It tells me that the default shell is Bash. And I can now type in who, just like I did before. I can see who's logged in. I can type in uptime, see how long the system has been up. Type in ls, again, not going to see much. If I do an ls-la, right, that'll show me a long listing, in the, which is the dash l piece, and the a, the dash a, that you know, the dash la, the a stands for show hidden files. And a hidden file, and we'll talk about this a little more later on in the course, is any file that begins with a period. So you can see all of these files here begin with a period which is why when I type ls they don't show up. Okay, this has been a quick tutorial to cover what we covered in week one on Wednesday night and if you have any questions please don't hesitate to email me at the email address that was provided to you on the syllabus. I can see that it looks like just about everybody has been able to log in and here's how I can check that. So I've got a script here called checking.bash. And what this will do is this will simply run. And sometimes I need to run it a couple times here because the, the, the file that it's checking into has gotten progressively larger. So it takes it a little while longer. So let me go ahead and kill it here. And let's try to run it again. The uh, personal phone call. But um, the script is called uh, checking.bash. And what the script does is it'll run through, and it's going to take a look for each user in the class. It's going to tell me how many times you've logged on from home. Now, again, this doesn't include logging in at the school or during class, right? So it actually eliminates those logins. It's just basically looking to see how many times you've logged in, right? You can see US uh, user CSI135B1 has only logged in one time and it was for less than a minute. And you can see B2 here is logged in five times, B3 one time. And so these are logins again from home. B7, quite a few logins, but all for zero minutes, right? All for less, less than a minute. And this basically just keeps me up to date on how many times you've logged in and this one here this is this just means still logged in users logged in right now and that's me CSI 135 B25 okay so what have we covered we've covered how to connect to the system vader.aacc.edu from home we've covered how to do that with a, a Windows operating system using either putty or secure CRT again Putty is free, Secure CRT is free for 30 days, but then you need to pay for it. And we've done uh, the logins on a Mac system, right? This is my iMac. And so as you can see here, you can use the terminal window, or again, you could download Secure CRT for the Mac and use that, right? And these are all viable options. Okay, this is the wrap up here for the review of what we covered during week one. I hope that you're all able to get logged into the system. It looks as if everybody has been able to at least log in. And remember, practice, practice, practice. All right, CSI 135, Section 400 students for the fall 2013 semester. Happy Labor Day weekend, and I will see you all Wednesday night. Have a great night.